Well, hello again, everyone, and welcome to the latest webcast that we're bringing you from Travel Weekly as part of our Roadmap to Recovery series. I'm smiling because I'm really excited about this one. I'm joined by Ellen Betteridge, who is the CEO of UniWorld, and she's not just anywhere. Ellen, you're joining us from your brand new ship, and that's exciting because I think it's the first time you've traveled anywhere for a while. So where, tell us where you are. So I am on board the super ship La Venencia, which is our new ship in Venice, Italy. Uh, so first of all, it's our we're the first cruise line to be sailing. So uh, out of North America. So it is uh, super exciting. Um, we have uh, probably 50% of the people on board. First cruise sailing and first cruise for Uniworld this year, this in you know 16 months, as well as it's the first time being on board this beautiful ship. Yeah, so I mean, a number of firsts and obviously really important for you to be there. Just before we move on, the 50%, Ellen, is that because of COVID rules around social distancing or is it just something you've put in because you wanted just to trial the first one? Right, so um, you know, we, may, we've got, we only got the, the green light that we could actually start sailing a few weeks ago. So okay. therefore, we really honestly didn't have time to like get it filled up. So, uh, right. you know, I think that that's really the ra rationale behind it. It's just people are still anxious about what's going to happen. And is it easy enough to get here? And we had to do something, you know, make people have to feel comfortable with traveling again first. Yeah. So, so those people on the first sailing are having an amazing time. The, oh, the service, yeah, they are. crew to passenger ratio must be amazing. Yeah, it sure, certainly is. And the crew is just, the thing is, is the crew is probably as happy as the passengers are to be here. They're just so okay. thrilled to be back at work and to have wonderful people around them. So it's, uh, it's all good. All right. Well, look, are we, I'm dying to see you around the ship. But before we do that, could you just tell us what your experience was like traveling? Because, you know, getting out, you know, getting on an airplane and coming right. to the ship and that sort of whole process. Was it easy? Did you, what, was it what you expected? Yeah, you know, so there's lots of rules. So I actually was scheduled to be on a Delta flight that was actually a COVID free flight. So I um, got my PCR test, uh, you know, uh, 20, 48 hours in advance. I filled out my passenger locator form, which was online with my Delta documents and, um, you know, and headed to the airport. And, uh, and I had to bring my, my vaccination card as well. Um, the day before I was traveling, I got a note from Delta telling me that actually I don't even need a PCR test anymore. All I needed was my vaccination card and this passenger locator form filled out. So um, I had, you know, I had it, so I brought it with me anyways, but it was so easy. I got to the airport and uh, they checked your documents and they sent you somewhere else to check them again. So you, you got checked quite a few times before you, I left New York. But then um, I got uh, into Italy, into Milan, and it was uh, just walked up. I, I saw one desk, I handed them some papers, they looked at them, you know, look, and then sent me to the place to get my passport stamped. And uh, hearing that stamp on my passport was like the best, it was the best, uh, just to hear it again and to be out there. Well, I think it would be really encouraging for people to hear then that, you know, of course we expect checks, but it wasn't onerous and no. certainly wouldn't put you off traveling. No, I was, um, from the time the plane landed, to the time I was in my car, to drive from Milan to Venice, I was, uh, it was probably about 40 minutes. That was it. Oh, wow. And the most time I waited was waiting for my luggage. Yes, okay, brilliant. <laughs> so All right. Just so, so then, through and they were so organized and uh, yeah, it was actually really impressive. It did, I d definitely expected more. So um, okay. it was a nice surprise. Yeah, good to hear. All right, and in terms of getting on a Uniworld ship, what are your, criteria requirements for passengers in terms of vaccinations and tests and things? Yeah, so for Uniworld, uh, we want them to have a negative PCR test or to, um, to be uh, fully vaccinated um, is what we're asking for. Um, you know, really it's the requirements of the airlines to get here is what they're gonna have to follow. So by the time they get here, they've already gone through that. Okay, um, so there's, not, there's nothing extra that you would be asking that they haven't gone through. And, and no. that vaccination, is it a vaccination plus a week or something like the ocean cruise lines are doing? Or is it just that you have to have to be double vaccinated? You have to be double vaccinated. Fine. Okay. Yeah. So that's yeah. not a problem. And so let's let's now get to the point of the, you know, let's get to the key thing, which is that you are on this brand new ship. Um, and uh, just, just explain to us, I mean, is it in the style of a Uniworld ship, which is obviously... You know, very unique, and we, we, we kind of know Uniworld style, or is it something slightly different? What have you done with this one? 
Well, this ship is actually a complete, um, she's like, it's been de designed by the House of Fortuny, which is, um, you know, it is a, an old design house with just gorgeous fabrics, etched glass. Um, you really feel as though you're in Venice the entire time you're on board the ship. You never leave it. So once again, we've brought the destination on, on board um, to make it uh, just feel special for people. And everyone just truly appreciates it. Um, it's absolutely stunning. Every ship, you know, I always think I'm going to find one that's, uh, you know, I'm going to be like, what's my favorite ship? It's like, no, it's always the one I was just on. <laughs> that's for sure. So, oh, absolutely. now you're going to take us on a tour in a minute, but um I mean, that's deliberate, isn't it, to make it like Venice, because this ship is designed to just sail in the Venice Canal and down the, the River Po, is that right? That's correct, yeah, she doesn't leave the region, so she stays here, she is truly your floating boutique hotel, right here in the heart of Venice, um, and I think that's what some people just, they just really enjoy that, um, it, it, right now, we're, uh, the ship's just now leaving this beautiful little uh, port called Stioja, uh, where we spent the day, we went to the markets, and uh, they have this great big flea market and lots of shopping, and then we um, we're now sailing to Burano. And in Burano, we actually, it's another first for us. We have a brand new docking spot uh, that we built uh, that's just for Uniworld. So we'll be the only ship that ever stays overnight there. Oh, that's nice. And overnights are really in demand, don't they? Customers yeah. like this idea of staying longer, but overnighting so they can really immerse themselves in a, in a destination. Exactly. So no, we're excited about it. Can't wait to get there. Listen, I'm going to just make you tell us a little bit more about the itinerary. I think uh, it's called Venice and the Gems of Northern Italy. Yeah. But, I mean, I've, I've, you've listed for me here some of the amazing experiences that you can do um, as part of this. It's only a seven night trip. You seem to be packing a lot in, Ellen. We so, do. So, you know, so, and some really exclusive opportunities as well. Do you want to just tell us, just right. give us a couple of highlights? Yeah, absolutely. So if you, um, if, if you were to do the Milan portion, which is an, an extra couple of days, you would actually, the guests actually got to go to the Last Supper, which was just amazing. And they loved it. And they were, by the way, it's closed to the public right now, but they opened it for Uniworld, which was very special for them. So there was a, a group of about 18 who were on that pre-extension and they just had, um, they just couldn't believe that it all got opened up for them. Um, here in Venice, they actually were able to go to, um, on Monday evening, they went to St. Mark's Basilica. And once again, St. Mark's right now is only, only opening for 250 people during the day and you have to have tickets. And for our group, we all got to go. They all got, I didn't get to, I wasn't here. They all got to go there in the evening and uh, experience St. Mark's Basilica just by themselves. So those kind of things really do make the trip incredibly special. Okay. And now just remind us how many, um, I know it's 50% capacity at the minute, but how many people would be able to sail on her in normal time? Um, 126. Okay. All right. So, so very small. Very intimate feel then, very small. Yep. Smaller than your other ships. Okay, well, do you want to, I know you've got to wear a mask at the moment to walk around. Yep. So if we can let you put your mask on and then okay. maybe you want to just take us and show us some of the, uh, you know, some of the main rooms and uh, maybe a stateroom if you if you can. And, and Ellen, you were just telling me that actually from Monday, you won't need to wear a mask. In fact, whose rule is That's that? That's correct. Who's yes, the very exciting to learn when I landed, I was told that as of Monday, that in Venice, that people will no longer have to wear masks on the streets, which means we won't have to wear them on the streets. Now, um, you know, it's, uh, I think it's still a decision as to whether we have people wear them on board. What we do know is that right now, everyone on board is vaccinated. So it's actually a, a nice feeling. So yeah, we um, feel very safe. Okay. Yeah, well, we're right. in our own little then, travel bubble. So tell us where you are now. And yeah, perhaps we can right. show us what what Absolutely. Let me uh, fix my screen here one moment. All right. Okay. So do you have a dining room, but uh, it's a beautiful restaurant called Rialto's. And in Rialto's, um, this it's not set up for dinner right now. We just finished lunch, but it's absolutely stunning. I actually want to show you really quickly so you can kind of see. They created all these beautiful little spaces yeah. where people can eat. I'm heading to the back of the ship here. Um, but it's like these, almost these little banquettes and these uh, yeah. little private corners. Oops, sorry about that. Some private little corners. Uh, I don't know if you can see the gorgeous fabric. It's, I'm not getting it good because of the sunshine. Um, but it's oh, absolutely it. beautiful. We can see it and we can see um, what it looks like, a parquet floor. Etched, etched glass. 
Um, so it's really nice, these little intimate spaces. And this was all designed pre-COVID, which is so interesting that we created this, but really it was after the Orient Express. So that was really the vision that, to that um, Tony Tolman had was, you know, that old um, romantic traveling experience. Um, so going right after that, and then these gorgeous parquet floors, um, this beautiful buffet, you know, which we have set up and you can see they have this etched glass in the side of it here. It's, yeah. it's all these little tiny noticeable touches throughout the ship absolutely make it incredibly special. And, and, so and I your, point, here. your point you were making there is you design this before you realize actually that people might want a little bit more privacy and you've got these little tiny areas that people can have. I mean, that. Look at that beautiful edge glass. It's just absolutely stunning. Yeah. It's like throughout the ship. Romica, do we have a stateroom you can show me? We can go down then. Great. So we're going to walk down. So we're going to go down here through the corridor. I'll walk past. <laughs> So you can see up in the, it's, the light's not doing us good, but there's beautiful, yeah, uh, beautiful. Created, uh, images in the ceiling. I they just I, all these little things. And then we have these gorgeous mirrors that are from a Murano glass factory. Beautiful um, sconces on the wall, also from the Murano glass factory. But I'm making my way down the corridor. You better, get an empty, you better get an empty stateroom, uh, Ellen. We don't want to go and film, film some passengers. We're not going to go in with passengers. We have to go down the floor to find one, which I guess is good. We put everybody upstairs. Okay, yeah. Be careful on the stairs. Make sure you watch where you're going. But uh, this is the lobby. And this was actually um, designed after the um, showroom of Fortuny this um, beautiful uh, statement piece in the center that. of the room. I love that center uh, seating area. That's stunning. And then if you go, if we go into here, I'm gonna quickly take you into the lounge, probably one of the hottest spots on the, in the ship, that's for sure. But once again, this gorgeous Murano glass is throughout the ship, you know, as a homage yeah. to beautiful Venice. Yeah. But then just, you can get a feeling for, once again, the gorgeous fabrics. The light's yeah. not helping us any. Yeah. We're sailing, so it's got lots of light coming in. But let me see if I can catch it for you on this side. It looks there we go. Funny. You can get a feeling for it. Look at the arms. Yeah. And then the very heavy. back there, we have a beautiful place called the Panini Bar. So yeah. it's another little private dining area, which people just love. You know, they, they want more than one place to eat dinner, right? So you have the main restaurant, which I was in, which is Rialto's. Then we have the Panini Bar. And then we have La Cantienta, which is downstairs, um, which I can take you past as well. So we're gonna head down to a stateroom right now. Right. Now, Lucy, we should have practiced this. <laughs> I think you're doing very well. I'm just worried about you on the stairs. Don't, don't trip. No, I'm fine. I'm fine, I'm fine. All right. I have a wonderful gentleman ahead of me who is just Ramaka, who's been with the company for 20 plus years. Oh. He's uh, definitely one of our pros. So here he is, he's bringing me here into 308. And this is just Good a, <laughs> there, there's Ramaka, there he is. Hi there. This is... Sorry, cannot see our smiles, but believe us, we are smiling. <laughs> oh, that's so lovely, I'm sure you are. It must be so wonderful to be sailing again. So this is just a, a standard stateroom. Um, she's in, in the lower level, because all the upper level ones are full. Yeah. But you can see the beautiful um, tapestries on the walls. Yes and the gorgeous beds. Yeah. You know, our Savoy beds are definitely always a hit. Everyone loves the beds. <laughs> yeah. Um, let me see if I sneak into a bathroom here. Yeah. Oh, look, there's, I didn't even see the door. Yeah, it's all hidden. Everything's hidden. Very nice. I don't know where the light is, but that would help one second. I take you into my room, but it's a mess. <laughs> Even if the lights are, oh, there they are. There's a bathroom, okay. So okay. these um, all new bathrooms are gorgeous um, marble bathrooms. Yes, they look beautiful. So all of these are, these are the smallest ones that we have on board because okay. um, all the other larger ones are taken. So unfortunately I can't show them to you, but they are really beautiful. Really beautiful and really lovely drapes at the window as well there. Yeah. That's quite, yeah, a, no, uni world. That's quite a uni world um, feature, isn't it? 
It is. And they definitely um, all have that. Um, you know, we want to be different from everybody else. We don't want to look like everyone else. We want to stand out. We want people to feel as though they're in the destination, you know, when they're here and to feel as though they're never going to leave it. So wow. I'm going to take you down one more level. Okay. To Cantienta. So to this evening, I have some amazing journalists on board. I wish you could be here, Lucy, but I know you couldn't. Oh, <laughs> so I know. this is La Cantienta. And you can see this gorgeous etched glass again, which is throughout the ship. I love but in that. here, this is a private dining area. So we, um, we can cook with the chef in here. That's amazing. That's all set up. And then here's the- uh, Ellen, Ellen, sorry to interrupt, but have you got those? Uh, have you got that on any other ships? That looks amazing. We do. So we have added this, Lucy, on. It started with the, the Joie de Vivre. And we also wow. have it on the super ship Beatrice. We also have it on the Bon Voyage. So like I said, customers have demanded, as have our advisors, that people want more unique places to eat when they're on board. They don't want to eat in the same restaurant all the time. Yeah. So we use this room either for wine tasting we, can, we use it for private dining. Uh, like I said, this evening, I'm hosting some people here. We're gonna do a cooking experience with, experience with the chef. But um, I love this room. It's very relaxed, but it's just beautiful. And how would you book that, Ellen? If you were on, would you book that pre-sailing or do you get on board and then decide to, to, to book it then? How it, does it as work? they get on board, they book it. So I think this week we have a family on board, a lovely family of 10. And uh, they, um, they ate here last night and they had so much fun. Um, and like I said, we'll be eating here tonight. So I think it depends on where people want to eat. Yeah. Uh, last night I actually ate in our pizzeria, which I don't know that you have time for me, but I can run you up there, but it really was fun. And uh, we were the first guests to eat in the pizzeria last night. So, so um, on, a, on a ship that carries only 126 people, you've got four different eating options. Yes, uh, five is, if you count room service. Yes, five, of course. Which is great. And so would everybody have a chance to eat everywhere or do you really yes. need quite, okay. You, the yeah, time because, the, because we have so few people, um, you do have the choice. Now this room here, we do have a charge for. Yeah. So there is a charge, I believe it's 90 euros. Um, but like I said, it's a full on wine tasting dinner experience um, that goes along with your cooking with the chef, if that's what you want to do. Uh, yeah. But also, if, if, say if no one else has booked it and a family wants to use it just to have a quiet family dinner together or something, we'll do that as well. Okay. So, you know, okay. always flexible, always trying to work, you know, with our guests to make it what they want. So Yeah. And, and while you're walking along, Ellen, you showed us a stateroom that you said was your sort of lowest category. How many different cabin categories are there? Right. So there's four. So we have the Grand Suites. Um, which is uh, absolutely stunning. And, um, you know, mine's a little messy, but I'm happy to take you in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's up to you. I'm not I don't sure care. To come I in want you to see it. Favorite. It's so beautiful. I actually want you to see it because I just don't yeah. think you can imagine how stunning. And all of the suites are different. So there's two grand suites and then there's four of the regular suites. And then there, the rest of the entire top deck is all of your uh, balcony cabins. And yeah. then the one we were on below was just all of our standard cabins. Okay. So once again, we're in the corridor, making our way down. You're going to be very fit after this, Ellen. What? You're going to be very fit. You won't need to go to the gym today. <laughs> All right. All right, here we are. We're coming okay. into, and I left my TV wow. out on me. So, but what you have to see, first of all, is the most stunning bathroom. Oh my goodness, a bath. I have a tub, yes, yeah. a tub, yeah. right? A gorgeous, gorgeous shower. Look at the size of it. I know, it's huge, right? Yeah. All my stuff, <laughs> put my television there on the wall just in case I wanna watch TV while I'm getting ready. Yeah. So, no, absolutely gorgeous. And the wood in these rooms is just stunning. Once again, that those the same that's on the walls. Yeah. Look at these door handles. Yeah. That's so cool. The detail is absolutely incredible. Yeah. Now wait. Oh. oh, look at your bed. Look at your headboard. I'm living like a princess in here. Is that gorgeous? <laughs> you really aren't going to want to get off, Ellen. No, wait. Here's my other thing, which we've added this is on a lot of our ships, but when I do this, one second. Uh, open. 
Look at this. That's my TV coming out of the ceiling. <laughs> so I can lay in bed and watch TV. I was gonna say, I mean, that is a great idea, but it, of course it's space saving, isn't it? Because really when you, you can lie in bed and look out the window if you wanted to at the scenery outside. So absolutely, you wouldn't want to have a permanent television there in case you wanted to see the, 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 the destination. Uh, you know, I think it's very funny though. So we have three televisions in this stateroom. Yeah, I've got one on my bed. I've got got one here on the wall. It's got CNN on. (laughs) And then you have another one in the bathroom. So go figure. (laughs) Yeah. And I imagine there's so much to do. You're not really going to be watching too much television. No, you're not. And I don't know where I do with my room key, but I'll figure that out later. But um, let me go back to, I can't think of anything else. I can show you the gym, but I I think there's probably people in it. So I better not do that. Okay. I I think that's fine. If you want to just head back to somewhere that you can it just to um finish off talking Ellen that would be great there um, we are j- just talk to me a little bit about um the people on at the moment are all Americans presumably are they they are yeah no actually I shouldn't say that we have some Europeans on board so okay. I actually have um some press on board from uh the Netherlands and from Denmark and from uh Finland <laughs> they just said to me Finland they're all they're standing down here um so uh, very nice to have them on board. You know, we took advantage of the fact that a lot of countries couldn't travel. So we reached out to some of our partners that were in other places and asked them to join us. Okay. And so tell me about, and obviously launching a ship in a pandemic can't be easy um, because obviously you want to showcase it. You, but I imagine you've done lots of preparation and training and sending out pictures and all, all the kind of marketing yeah. materials, have you? Oh. You know, one of the things we did, Lucy, and I'm going to flip my camera one more time, so you've got to see this is the coolest innovation we've done. Okay. Um, let me show you one moment. Come on. All right, switch camera. All right. So in front of me here, this is a machine. Yeah. And it's called MXP Connect. And what it does is it reads who I am. Yeah. And then it reads my temperature. Oh, and it allows me on and off the ship. But this is our new technology to allow people on and off the ships. How so cool now is that? They don't have to have a, well, any kind of, presumably they still need to get a room key because we've just seen you using yours, but that doesn't, there's nobody even to stand there and take their temperature. No, no so, so you can't, you don't even need a room key. You stand in front of it and it recognizes your picture. So once you uh-huh. get on board, we take your picture, your picture's yeah. uploaded into the system and then the system um, will identify who you are when you come on and off the ship. Oh my goodness. How so cool is that? That is very cool. And, and Ellen, you and I spoke, oh, well, we've spoken a number of times, haven't we, in the last year or so through this pandemic. And you were always pioneering lots of different um, sort of procedures and protocols to make sure that you would be COVID safe. I mean, you were looking at sort of stuff in the air for cleaning. What, what else have you put on board your ships? Right. So we have something called E-Mist. I'm going to go sit down over here. I'm up yeah. in a room all by myself, so I don't have to wear my mask. We um, started something called E-Mist, and what E-Mist is, is we've gone around and we've sprayed all the surfaces so that they um, take off all the, um, it's an antimicrobial surface um, prevention, so therefore all your viruses and spores, et cetera, cannot stay on the surfaces. Okay. So we've added that, which actually we're finding to be great because then our housekeeping team doesn't have to use the heavy disinfectants anymore. Yeah. So it's also really nice from that perspective. Um, we have the MXP Connect, um, so to, for security as well as reading people's temperatures. Yeah. Um, we then also um, have hand sanitation stations everywhere uh, yes. throughout the ship. Um, all of our crew, of course, is wearing masks, and they will probably continue to wear masks even when it is lifted. So you know we're going to take on whatever the regular, whatever the regulations are, is what we'll follow. Yes. So yes. okay. All right, and then what's the plan for the rest of the fleet, Ellen, uh, in terms of getting other ships back operating? Yeah, so from here, I'm going to Portugal to launch the ship in Portugal. So that launches on the 27th. Uh, So I know, it's so exciting. And then on July 4th, we have the super ship Bon Voyage and the Joie de Vivre in France, which will launch. And then on the 11th, we have the Catherine launching. Uh, So those three ships in France. And then on the 16th, we then start with the ships that are on the Rhine and the Danube. So after that, you know, it goes from there. And then we're planning again in, in September, we'll have our ship Aqua Expeditions. Um, she's filling up to September 1st. 
Um, so those voyages are definitely filling up. And then we have- She's a bit different, isn't she? Just, do you wanna just explain to us about that ship? Yeah, so the, the Aqua Expedition, she's a very small ship. She's 32 passengers. We chartered that ship from, from Aqua. It is um, absolutely stunning. And she's, you know, once again, for the region, doesn't go anywhere. Uh, through Uniworld, we do a pre and a post so they can get Lima on the um, beginning and they can go to Machu Picchu at the end. And that is really an expedition type ship. So when you're on board, you are going off into your zodiacs every day and seeing wildlife and experiencing it. And then you come back on board. And what I love about the ship, it has these huge windows that are floor to ceiling so you can see out to the entire world, everything. It is a very luxurious experience, um, absolutely stunning. So, All right, brilliant. so wow. I, well, it, does, it sounds like you've got a lot on your plate in the next few weeks, um, but I know you, I'm sure you will have still been planning for even further in the future whilst we've been in this pandemic, while people haven't been sailing. So what, uh, what else do you want to do with Uniworld? What yeah. else? What's the well, next plan? We do have a lot going on. I think I drive my poor team crazy, but um, you know, we just recently launched a, um, a, our own version of a world cruise. Wow. So it's a cruise that actually starts in Egypt, and um, then it will go from Egypt, it goes to Italy, where they'll go to, um, so first you go to Cairo, and then you go to the Nile and experience that. Then you're going to fly to Lugano, and then you go to Milan, and then from Milan you come down here to do our Venice experience. And then from there they're going to go to the Maria Teresa and do the Danube. And then from there they fly to um, France, and they do the Joie de Vivre. And wow. then from there they fly to Portugal, where they um, will experience the, the Douro, and then they end in Lisbon. Um, it's in 2023. We put it on sale just a couple of weeks ago, and I think we have two cabins left. Oh my um, so, so, sorry, how many nights and how many ships are you experiencing? Four to six nights, five yeah. ships. Five ships. Um, yeah, and we're going to do a big party for the guests um, in Cairo to start to kick it off, and then we'll end it in, together in Lisbon. And uh, it's just for 80 guests. And we actually have a traveling concierge who will travel with them just to make sure they have everything that they need along the way. And uh, you know, I, we weren't so sure how people would react to this, but it's very different than a normal world cruise, right? But it's a uh, lot of interest and very excited. So it's good, yeah. all and good. I, and do you think that taps into the trend that we're hearing all the time about people having been locked away so they're now wanting to blow the budget and they, you know, if they're going to travel, particularly if they're coming from America to Europe, I guess, yeah. or they really want to do a really big trip and make sure that they, you know, really, really maximize the opportunity. Absolutely. People are going on longer trips. They're spending more money. They're upgrading to the next category. Um, it's just, it's awesome. And so many families are traveling together. So I think, imagine if you didn't get to see your family for an entire year. So you see a lot on board. Like I said, we have a fantastic family who sailed with us a couple of times before and, uh, and they're just having a ball. They just, and I met a couple this morning. I was uh, with them on our, on our walking through Chioja and uh, they're sailed with us three times, but they only decided to come with us three weeks ago. They wow. heard we were open and they booked it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you think, I mean, obviously, just to come back to the UK market, um, I always get to ask you about this, but, you know, I know it's an important market for you. Very. And I know you've been, your team here have been engaging still with the trade. But And I know you haven't got a crystal ball, but is the feeling that there's pent-up demand in the UK market and the, just the minute things open up, you think you'll get some good response from Brit, from Brit. Absolutely. We're still getting a lot of Brits who are booking and they're booking for later this year. They're booking for 2023. So we've also opened up 2023 early. Uh, 2022 is just filling up. So I, I do think that pent up demand is absolutely there. You know, it's so convenient for people who are in the UK um, to, to get to our ships. And I think people want a holiday. They want to get away from things. Um, one of the things I really want to do while I'm here is to show people that we are still having a great time. And yes, you know, when you are walking around the ship, we're asking everyone to wear masks, but once you're seated, you know, you can take your mask off and have your drinks and have your food. And, and it's, um, so it's going really it's well not, from that it's perspective. It's intrusive really. And it doesn't really impact your, your enjoyment of your holiday. I really don't feel it does at all. I just, uh, it, um, you know, it's, it's, I think everyone's incredibly comfortable, um, you know, getting around and they're not feeling, you know, I, I asked last night how they, how they thought things were going, et cetera. It's very warm here in Italy. So that was the only thing. I, I can't control the weather. I can't control the weather. <laughs> yeah, I try, but you know. Oh, um, the other okay. thing we did, Lucy, during this pause is we also implemented, um, we actually created, I should say, something called a mystery trip. 
So the mystery trip is going to happen next Ju uh, June. Um, I'm actually going to host it. So all we told people is that it's June 9th, it's 10 days, and here's the price. And, he, and, and he, from depending on where you're flying from, you um, here's the price. If you're from the UK, it's this price. The US, it's this price. Australia, it's this price. That's all we told them. It sold out in about four hours. It was crazy, Lucy. We know, no one thought, who's going to buy something that you don't know where you're going to go, what you're going to do? But that right. tells why, you this money you, demand is there. So why did you do that then? Well, I mean, it's the, it's the business it's fun. <laughs> I, just, I just thought, you know, it's something actually I've wanted to do for a couple of years. And I said, and my team thought I was a little crazy and said, this is, people are not going to buy something if they don't know where they're going. Well, it depends on who you are. I'm a person who would do that, right? Because I just think it's yeah. a fun adventure. Um, and so th that sold out so quickly, we opened up another one that sold out. We then had a wait list of 231 people who all gave us $500 to hold their name on the wait list. Imagine, right? And so then we went ahead and um, uh, we opened another one and we didn't tell, we didn't put it out to the public. We just went to those people and um, yeah. created it for them. So and, our intention so, is to do I know it. you can't tell me much about it, otherwise it wouldn't be a mystery, but yeah. is there a pressure, I guess, to make sure this is really kind of special because people have taken a risk, haven't they? They've, they've absolutely given, you know, put their faith in you that this is gonna be something really special. So what we've done is it may be the same itinerary, right? In some cases, some cases it's not, by the way. Um, we've changed up some itineraries too, but the, every, all the experiences in those destinations will be different. So even if you've done that cruise, you would not be doing the same things. And the things that we're doing are a little bit over the top too. Um, and a lot of really cool things that we're gonna do on board the ship that we've never tested or never done before. It sounds, so, this sounds like it's the it's the CEO's dream trip. All, it the, is. Stuff, all the stuff you want to do. <laughs> but you know what? I had we had so much fun planning the first one, and then I said to my team, "How hard would it be to plan two more?" They're like, "No, we can do it." So they did. Because they're like, "Hey, no one knows what we're doing, so we've got plenty of time to do it. We don't have to tell anybody." You haven't got, you haven't got to tell them. And do you? But you have to host these. It has to be hosted by the CEO. I'm hosting just the first one. I wish I had the time to host all three, but I don't. Um, so I do have to work. So I don't get to do that. Oh. Um, the other thing, Lucy, I hope I'm sure you've heard about all of our new cruise and rail experiences. Yes, tell us about those. Yeah, I have. We have. We've written about that. But tell us about yeah. that. Been selling really well. That is selling really well. So we actually, so first we came out with the cruise and rail. This is going to go from Zurich down to Venice. And it's a, you know, three nights on Golden Eagle luxury trains, um, which I love them because they're all en suites. Um, beautiful. They have the same philosophy as Uniworld. They're, it's a beautiful train, but they, it's own, it's a family owned business. Um, it is all about taking care of the guests. So I, I, I love their philosophy and I love who they are. So excited to be working with them. It sold so well, and that was for 2021. So we have our, our we have journeys happening this year. That for 2022, we put out that same Zurich to Venice, and then from Venice, and you'll join the ship. We've also added another one that's going to go Venice to Istanbul, and you're wow. on the train for five nights, and then you spend two more nights in Istanbul. So that's a you know that's a very long uh, exciting journey. We have another one that's going to go from um, if, if you you end up in Budapest. Um, on the Maria Teresa, and then from there you will go up to the castles of Transylvania, oh which is, um, you know, I think that's the one I actually want to do. Um, and we actually go to Drum Castle where we spend the evening, and um, and we're the only people there at nighttime. We have a special dinner for the guests, um, but you see all these amazing castles and going through Romania, and apparently it's the, the train journey itself is spectacular. But once again, they're all inclusive experiences and every day you're getting off and twice a day sometimes off the train, experiencing things, going to places. So very similar to a river cruise. If you stop and think about it, it's like this intimate experience of people all together. But you're really, you know, seeing a destination very close up and um, experiencing it in a very special way with just a small group of people. So, so do, you um, see, do you see that sort of rail river cruise combination expanding over time? Because it does. You're right. It allow, you know, I guess the river, you're limited to the, the ports along or the cities right. along the river, whereas this allows you to perhaps go a little bit deeper. Right. We are limited to that. But what we have done is that for 2022, 
and in 2023, um, so I've already secured everything up through 2024, by the way. Um, we, for 2023, uh, 2022, we're also going to have a Trans-Siberian. So it will oh, wow. be a um, rail only. So no crews involved, but just we went ahead and chartered the um, uh, one of the train cars. So we've got four, it's for 40 passengers. And what we're going to do is um, have a Uniworld person who travels with them so that every night they'll have, a, you know, some special Uniworld treats, but also, um, and also we're having some of our menu items put on board. Um, but the Trans-Siberian is a big bucket list experience yes, for people, absolutely. you know what I mean? And so it's one of those things where it's a, one of the, it's the longest journey on a train and uh, it's supposed to be absolutely amazing. So we're uh, going to be offering that as well. Uh, how are people going to choose between all these things you're, you're offering? I don't know. I know. I, I know. We have a few other ideas up our sleeves. So, uh, you know, it's it's fun. You know, I really believe we have to continue to innovate. We have to continue to bring out new things. I've got to give advisors a reason to pick up the phone to call their customers, right? Yeah. They need a reason to call them and say, wow, I saw this and this is something you've got to try, right? So, yeah. Um, you know, since I was an yeah, advisor, it's really years hard, ago. isn't it? It's hard yeah. at the moment to ring people and ask, you know, necessarily for money and things like that. Yeah. So actually, if you can inspire them, right. that's, that, that's that's a great. It's, thing. it's all about inspiring people um, to you know see the world and to experience it. All right, well, Lucy, thank we'll, you so much. We'll say goodbye. Um, right, thank you so, so grateful. much. We look forward to, and I can't wait to get um, the UK customers and our advisors on board. And the trade, and the trade press. Oh, yes, absolutely. You got it. I'm nice really happy. But listen, thank you so much, Ellen. Lovely to see you as always. The ship looks you beautiful. You too. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.